there, Vault Dwellers. Follow us as we take a topic from the Fallout universe and discuss it in a group of diverse individuals. We are the Fallout Roundtable. Join us, the conversation has already started. Hello, and welcome to the Fallout Roundtable Extra. Um, we're calling this, what were we calling this again? I forgot. <laughs> uh, uh, rewind something. Um, God, and I'm forgetting. I don't know. Uh, we're episode just deep, rewinds or something episode like that. Episode rewinds. Sure, that sounds good. It's deep diving into uh, each episode of the Fallout on Prime series. Uh, we've been just a little bit excited about it. Just <laughs> I don't know if you caught the episode one yet, but you know we went very deep into every scene of the first episode, and we're going to do the same this time. Uh, so this is uh, an extension of the Fallout Roundtable, and you can find us at Fallout RTB on Twitter. Uh, you can email us, fallout, uh, falloutrtb at gmail.com, or you can find us here on YouTube, Fallout Roundtable, or I don't know, probably anywhere else. We are streaming on Thursday evenings on Twitch, Fallout Roundtable, where we do our regular episodes. And um, I have Eric or Sulior with me on these episodes and go ahead and Jeez. plug all your stuff <laughs> uh well the the fallout related show that i do is called tapes from the waste i actually just uh did a an episode with my uh, co-host kelsey about uh the show as well our part two so it's definitely on my brain uh, i've also got a starfield podcast at elder schools well, lots of bethesda related podcasts uh just Look me up on Twitter and you'll find a link of per, to pretty much all of their shows, uh, those shows on my uh, bio. Yeah, link in the bio. Um, yeah, it, it more uh, wholesome link in the bio for that. <laughs> yeah, we, that, that's pretty much the thing. Everybody's link in the bio, link in the bio. All right. So to jump right in, we're doing episode two today. Um forget the name of these i should i should remember to keep track of this no, i didn't even think Names to write the name of the episode down <laughs> i remember that the first one was called the the end but i can't remember what yeah. episode yeah. two was called so probably not important um I'll, I'll keep track of that in the future so we open up this episode to the ink spots into each life some rain must fall I, I, I just love the music <laughs> we're all big fans of yeah. The music that Fallout has chosen, or Bethesda has chosen to put into the Fallout games and now the, the TV series. You know, we all became big fans or new fans of all this 40s and 50s music, the big band, all of that. The, some of us the who are of a certain The episode is called The Target, by the way. What was it called? The Target, which the target. makes sense. Yeah, the Target it does because that's this is how we're introduced to the Target that everyone is after. Yep. But uh, Bethesda introduced us or reintroduced us, if you're of a certain age, to uh, a lot of this music. <laughs> I remember my grandmother listening to Big Band when I was a kid, and it kind of takes me back to that and kind of you know gives me little warm fuzzies and reminds me of of my grandmother listening to this kind of stuff and me as a kid going okay whatever <laughs> you know um but now i love it so we we see a scene of a man in a lab coat working with puppies who look horrible mm -hmm. like apparently they're just yeah born. he just incinerates one like right and like this other guy does and he well, we see didn't even really react like a, we see a poster or a sign or something that says that anything under 10 ounces has to be incinerated so they're weighing the puppies and they just off the bat incinerate, just toss them right in a couple. And that's just sad. Somebody we... in the Modus Files Discord said it looked very Nazi ish, which uh, is it appropriate. Does. Like, because even, even his look is very like German scientists. Um, they do have that, doing that, their that kind of look. Yeah, they do have that kind of look. I don't know if it's like his little round glasses or what it is, yeah. but he does have a certain uh, a, You a certain just aesthetic. expect that accent to come out of him, but no. No, he, um, he's he's regular dude, but we see him weighing this puppy who obviously is not 10 ounces, but he fakes the weight and 
brands this puppy as CX404. Mm -hmm. And he has like, he has like a little certain bond with CX404. And we see them doing a little of what looks to be like behavioral engineering. And he, he clearly has a bond with this dog. He's faked the weight so she won't be incinerated. And he, you see him kind of, he's a, he, you know, he, he's trying to not get caught, but trying to act like, oh, everything's normal as he walks this dog yeah. out past guards, like right under their noses, out of the lab, like everything's normal, like we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, but you can tell he's kind of not doing what he's supposed to be doing and takes this dog back to his quarters, what you think is his quarters, but looks like maybe a little private lab something yeah um well and didn't was this was this when he opens up like the hidden passage well he um, has like a little like a little hole in the wall that he has yeah hidden. he hides her in this hole in the wall right this is so, where like yeah she lives she stays so you know he's hiding her and he's keeping her like probably not in a kennel where all the other dogs are but he's yeah. keeping her in what i assumed was like his quarters or his private lab so he's not like this dog's not being studied, reported, or whatever. And he's right. My husband's theory is that he was doing his own experiments on this dog. That he right. Was, and then he ended up using it on himself. And I kind of let him jump in ahead there. But I yeah, don't whatever think he's that's doing, related. whatever bioengineering he's doing. Right. Okay. Right. So yeah, he's um, working on something. He's working on something in his little private lab. And yeah, so when my husband watched it, he's like well, I think he's doing his own studies on this dog because we do see him, right. you know, the dog's running on a treadmill, but I don't know if that's just because obviously a dog needs exercise. I mean, it's a Belgian Malinois. <laughs> that dog yeah. is not going to be like, I'm a he couch to, dog. He had to uh, motivate it with a teddy bear. Right. <laughs> so he's he's got this, you know, teddy bear hanging at the end of the treadmill so that, you know, the dog has something to run for. And I think mm -hmm. mainly, you know, he's doing that to keep the dog give the dog exercise because he can't just go let's go for a walk buddy because he's not supposed right, to have the dog then they would see, yeah he's not supposed to have that's dog, what right? i think i think that like i don't know that he's necessarily studying doing anything to the dog i think he's like the dog is just his pet now but yeah, it definitely makes sense i think that uh, the treadmill is to give the dog exercise because he's hiding the dog in a wall the dog is not getting a lot of exercise I think the studying that he's doing is something for himself. Now we know what this is many episodes later. later. Yeah. Um, but what he does, you know, so we see, we see him doing that. He's working on something while he's working, you know, while the dog is, you know, they're living, the dog is obviously getting bigger. Um, and so you then see him injecting whatever it is he's working on and it's like a blue glowy substance he injects it into the back of his neck behind his ear mm -hmm. and i you don't know is it like a microchip i mean what is this like a little vial we don't yeah, know there were a lot is. of theories about that from the trailers um yeah we yeah. we all had we all had our theories so i know when we did our conjecture show from the trailers we were like oh is he injecting himself with FEV? Is he going to be a super? Because he did kind of look like Doctor Virgil. Um, a he he bit. looked like he could have been a Virgil S character. That's kind of what we had thought. So I think, you know, not we don't think it's maybe that now because we see that it's some kind of like it looks like a little. I mean, like I said, I don't know if it's like a microchip or some kind of little pellet type thing or something. Yeah, because he did injected. inject a dog too at one point. So. They did that in the very beginning yeah. before he took her. I don't think he injects the dog. That I mean, mm. not once he takes her. That was like a beginning thing. And I don't know if they inject her with like a chip, like a microchipping their dogs or something, but they do tattoo them. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what that was about, but he took her after that because I think he didn't want her uh, further conditioned the way they were doing because you notice right. when they show the scene of all the dogs sitting there they've got some kind of transmitters on the back of their necks or something and they're all right. like yeah it's true you know like robot dogs so whatever it is they're doing with these dogs i don't think he wanted her part of it and we yeah. know she's not very well behaved because he's like sit 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 and she's just like whatever <laughs> <laughs> like any dog 
<laughs> like like my dog. <laughs> my dog's like, do you have treats in your hands? No, I'm not going to sit. <laughs> it's like, I only sit for food. Um, so we see that he's, after he's injected himself, he gets himself ready. He's like packing up. He's going to leave this facility. One thing that I noticed, he has a pit boy. He yeah, straps yeah, on his pit boy. I didn't notice that the first time that I watched, but I did the second time. I'm like, I noticed that the what? first time I was like, Duder has a pit boy, but he's not in a vault. What? <laughs> so that was interesting because I'm like, we don't know what kind of facility this is yet, first of all, not right away. At this moment in time, we don't I mean, know. We what kind of have facility. a little bit like because they mentioned the enclave was in the first or was it the first episode or was it this? I think it was the first episode. Um, like his, uh, who was it? Well, was it okay, Oldover? so yes, they we do get the uh, we do know that he that this the target, but at the same time, like the, the general viewer isn't going to know who the enclave is. So new people wouldn't know. Right. Only people who've played the games would know. And yeah. so this is this is why, you know, because we we if if you're good at looking at weird sketches, then you would catch that, <laughs> okay, he's the guy. He's the target. Yeah. He's the one they're looking for. Uh and of course we know that he has a companion who's a dog. That would be the CX404. Mm -hmm. And so you know, you have to think, okay, this is probably an enclave facility. And, but he has, okay, so he's got a pit boy, which is vault tech. So what's up with that? Now we have kind of like off and on wondered if enclave and vault tech weren't kind of some kind of hand in hand. Uh, yeah, which they, they had to have been. Situation, uh, you know, that's kind of been one of the weird theories that have gone back and forth in the games, but we have no confirmation on this. We still don't. It's still a theory, but this kind of gives you a little bit more to kind of suck on there, you know, a little bit more to chew on. <laughs> like, oh, if he has a pit boy, he's Enclave. Does that mean? I mean, it just kind of gives a little more substance yeah. to the Vault Tech and Enclave working together theory. Because otherwise, why does he have a pit boy? So he puts right. on this pit boy. And he's packing up to leave, but somebody has found him out and somebody comes into his, and we don't hear them talking, but they're clearly arguing. We kind of see this as viewed by the dog, kind of, you know, the dog's kind of watching these two people interact. We don't hear what they're saying, but they're obviously arguing. They're not pleased, you know, that this is going to, and all the dog sees is that, you know, Wilsig is in trouble. You know, this, this is her person and he's in, you know, mm -hmm. he's, he's her person and he's in trouble. And so she attacks this other person that's come in and who is, who's arguing with Wilsick and she kills him. You see a lot of bloodshed. So apparently she's gone for the jugular. There's blood everywhere on the floor and Wilsick is just sitting there in shock and she comes up and nuzzles his hand and now he has blood all over his hand. So it's <laughs> obvious to you as a viewer. He's in trouble. That she has killed this person. Shh, shh, shh. Garbage oh, truck is coming. So the dog is growling. So, <laughs> speaking shh, of dogs, mean yeah, dog meat. My dog meat is growling. So they, you know, now there's some kind of alarms going off in the facility that there's an incident, and Wilzik's like, "We gotta go." So mm -hmm. he gets the dog together. He's trying to very calmly leave, so nobody suspects him. But he's like trying to make tracks too. He's like, "We gotta get." So once he's outside, he ditches his, um, you know, his uh, pit boy, and I'm guessing because that can that can track him. So yeah, he, you know, he uses it to get out of the facility, but then he ditches it as soon as he's out. And then one of my favorite things happens: <laughs> the turrets pop up with a little a little monitor that says, "Please remain calm." <laughs> While we're, we while we're the crap shooting. out of you, <laughs> yeah. And I, when I first saw that in the trailer, I thought maybe it was shooting at a mole miner because he was like hunched over, had his jacket over his head, and, and his like, white that, laptop. That kind of looked like a well, it, it looked dirty at that point. So I was, I was like, maybe that's a, a mole miner, I guess that but doesn't no, it was, it was well sick. 
but um yeah it's just one of those things where it's like you're analyzing like frame by frame uh-huh. it's like, it kind of looks like a mole miner but i no, it was loved, it was him i want turrets in my camp that say please remain <laughs> calm <laughs> I love that. Uh, so, you know, we watch him somehow get out of there unscathed because apparently these are turrets that can don't do their job. <laughs> and uh, so he gets out, he gets away with, uh, with 404, four, whatever we're calling her, four, I think is what he calls her. And they get away. And uh, we then see the, the Fallout logo, which gets shot up which was pretty cool. And then we cut to the next scene, which is Lucy walking on the beach as we hear, don't fence me in, which we see a (laughs) lot of really good. uh, And I don't know how much of this is like probably CGI stuff or maybe Photoshop. I don't, whatever they do. I'm not film person, but we see some really good background shots of, you know, shacks and abandoned buildings and uh, like the the um, old decrepit ship that's buried in sand yeah. that she walks next to. Uh, the scene that everybody just laughed at when she gets startled by the tumbleweed that's rolling by. And she's like, what the? But, you know, you live your entire life in a vault and all of a sudden, you know, this plant comes running at you. And of course, it's going to startle you. It's nothing you've ever seen before. And you don't know yeah. if it's like, for all she knew, it could have been sentient and it was attacking her. She didn't know that it was something being blown by the wind. They didn't have that in the vault. No. You know? <laughs> Things didn't blow around randomly in the vault because <laughs> the wind. There was no, yeah. <laughs> you know, and now A she's little dealing bit of air with conditioning. Good. That's about it. Right. You know, now she's dealing with ocean gale. So, you know, that was, I thought that was legitimate to be startled. I mean, you're also, she doesn't know what to expect. So her senses are already heightened. And I know how I get that way because I don't see very well at night. So, and especially if I'm tired, like anything like startles me because I'm just like, oh, <laughs> the slightest little thing I feel like, you know, because I'm always just hyper aware. Yeah. So it's, I, can see I just that. thought that the environmental storytelling in this whole sequence was so good. I thought um, so. I just talked about this on uh, on uh, tapes from the waste, but um, that's one of the things that Fallout in general does so well. Um, going through, well, you know, we're both playing through Fallout Three for the Fallout feed, and you go to minefield, and this is one thing that stuck with me from the first time I played Fallout 3 is you go into these houses in Minefield and you see like the the positioning of these skeletons and they've been there for over 200 years and you just, you can picture what is happening while the apocalypse is taking place. Um, there's the, the two, there's the couple that's laying together in bed and they're cuddling and you, that's how they've been ever since then. So you, you get that as the scene is playing out with where Lucy is going through this house. Mm-hmm. And there's a family sitting around the table. Yeah. And she finds a bottle of poison. Yeah. So, you know, the, you know one yeah. of the parents or whatever was trying to spare their family that. And yeah. It, it, she, it, yeah, oh, the God. family at the breakfast table. Yeah. The, the vault tech plan d bottle the econo savings plan yeah which you find out that's what it was later on um mm-hmm. at the end of the episode well it says it that... on the bottle oh okay yeah i read the and bottle it kind of tells you all about it at the end but yeah that you you get explained like what it is later uh in yeah. the episode but um i read the bottle because of course you know it's what i do i drugs are my <laughs> life so i I see a drug bottle and I'm like, ooh, what's that? You know, because we didn't have, I didn't know if it was something we had in game or if it was something new. And of course, it's something new. Right. We've never seen that. And, um, and you know, and who else was just like, why doesn't she loot this place? You know, <laughs> any version, like, you know, because if you're a Fallout player, you know, uh, you're not playing the game unless you're over encumbered because we loot everything. Right. She never loots I mean, any of these places that she goes into. We're like, 
look around it probably find something useful to, in the cabinet <laughs> yeah it probably had to do with the uh her vault tech upgrade oh ooh, stealing I'm is sure, wrong it doesn't matter i'm just, sure she's that kind a of plays into person. the whole shootout in uh, philly later on too which we'll we'll get to that but oh yeah, i know that, that, yeah that that, that was a whole thing too. I have, yeah i have notes what, on that like was girl it's like well even though these people are dead that's still stealing right and stealing yeah is wrong and then uh one other thought that i had when she was you know when she was startled by the tumbleweed is she sees uh buried a half buried assault tron in the sand yeah yeah, that was so good. The first time and when we when this, we had but... done the interview with Zach and he was talking about they had borrowed a prop that someone had made. Um, yeah, like that assault Tron um, that they had borrowed Which, from someone and beautiful yeah, if you guys work. Check that out. Definitely go check that out. That was that was awesome. And that assault Tron that was buried in the scene looked so good. And then I kept thinking like, ooh. She's so lucky it's dead, you know. Like, yeah, I want to see her run into one that's alive at some point yeah, in the series like, and just see like what on earth she thinks of that. <laughs> because I'm, I'm sh like they had robots in the vault, right? Didn't they? Did they not? Um, I don't remember. Yeah, I mean they had to have because there were Mister Handys in Vault Fallout Three, at least one of them. I mean, I can't uh, remember if they did in their vault or not. I don't remember seeing any. So I don't know, I don't if, know if they did and we just vault, didn't see but... them or what. So I don't know if she's familiar with them at all. Um, but, you know, assault trends are just a whole special. They're like, they're my least favorite robots. I'm not going to lie. I don't. I'd like rather them. an assault run than a sentry bot. No, I'd rather a sentry me. bot. They're slow. Yeah, but they're powerful. I'd rather a sentry bot than a assault run. And I've never seen an, a sentry bot go uh, invisible. True. Because when those assault yeah. trons go invisible, it's like, holy crap, where'd they go? <laughs> you don't like them. <laughs> yeah. The one in 76 when you're going to get the, the like, was it the Grafton, not Grafton, but uh, the mining company, uh, Garrison Mining Company, when you are getting your first set of power armor through the, the quest, when oh, yeah. you get level 23, oh my God, I can't tell you how many times that one killed me. Mine was when you were doing the quest with Ra, Ra Ra and uh, Gale. Yeah. You had to get Ra Ra out of the, mm -hmm. out of the uh, pipes or whatever. And there was that one in there. And I finally figured out how to avoid it. And, you you know, here's a tip. Shoot the legs. Mm -hmm. Because then they have to crawl. <laughs> they can still you blast you with down. their head laser. They can still blast but, you, but, yeah. it, you know, at least it slows them down and you know where they are. But uh, they're not gonna um, get you. Therapy. I just remember when I first started playing 76, and this is like totally off the subject, which we do very well. <laughs> uh, when there was no people in the game, I yeah. literally one of the reasons that I kind of quit was because I was so done with like having to go on a quest, and I had to go this certain way, and it was no matter how much I tried to sneak around or whatever, this one assault run would always find me and just turn me to pulp. I was Their like, I am done trying this. <laughs> and I was pretty low <laughs> level. And it was a pretty low level quest. And the stupid assault run would always just pulverize me. But... Yeah. But the way I am, my determination, I, like, I'm like, all right, you know what? Screw you. I'm going to I'm gonna beat this I usually anyway. am too. But I think it was just because of the fact that um, I had lost. My son and I were playing together. And I had already lost, you know, he had already lost interest in it. So... I didn't really have anybody to play with at the time. So it was like, eh, I'll just go back to playing Fallout 4. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I'm going to go back to building my my wonder dream. Oh, and this is for Andrew. Um, uh, build up Nordhagen Beach Family Resort. <laughs> the best they resort. They have a Nordhagen Beach. The best beach ever. <laughs> so back to the episode. So Lucy goes ahead and she founds a place to to settle down. She builds herself a fire. She recites her little, I don't know, it's like some kind of scout thing to remember how to build a fire. She builds her fire. She sleeps. She takes her vault, her pit boy off, goes to sleep, everything. Next thing she knows, she's woken up by a growling dog. Mm -hmm. Which is a little creepy, not gonna say. I mean, I probably wouldn't have just like, I don't know, slept out yeah, in the open. So many things like your mind starts like, okay, is is that a Yagwai? Is that right? A, a, I would have totally what is this in a house that would have been hard for anybody to get into, much less something big. But 
she's out there in the open, just enjoying life. Like I'm at Girl Scout camp and she gets woken up by a growling dog and Wilzig has found her. And here's four. The reason four is growling is because there's a rad roach out there. So yep. four jumps on the rad roach, which is almost the size of four, kills it. <laughs> She's over there rawr, 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 killing it. And Wilzig opens with a joke, not really a joke, but how, you know, back before the war, people used to joke that only the cockroaches would survive a yep. nuclear bomb. And he said, not only did they survive, but they improved. And then he talks about how they improved and now they can actually murder people. <laughs> and so you see all this time, you know, while he's talking, Fora's tearing this Brad Roach apart. Uh, and it's kind of unnerving, you know, because he's talking about the ways that the red, that the roaches have improved and Fora's tearing this thing to bits. And it's big. It's really big. <laughs> <laughs> uh, compared to what we have now. I mean, it's even yeah. bigger than the ones you see in Texas where everything is big. Um, of course, they call them palmetto bugs there to make them fancy. Um, and they are big. I've seen them. They're big. <laughs> Very big. And he tells her that uh, she should know better than to light a fire after dark. Yeah, because that will attract raiders and who knows mm -hmm. what. And vault dwellers are endangered species. She comes from a place of rules, of laws, and this place is indifferent to all that. And that uh, her, you know, not being, not willing to do what it takes to survive up here is what's going to get her killed. And he says that if she insists on staying, that she is going to have to adapt. And when she adapts, is she going to want the same things? When she becomes different, when she becomes a different animal altogether, is she going to want the same things? And he keeps telling her to go home yep. because, you know, she's not going to like who she becomes if she adapts to the wasteland. And the whole time, you know, she tells him, I can't go home. I have to find my dad. I can't go home. And so she's trying to steal herself against you know basically yeah. what he's saying she's trying to understand so what trying he's to saying. scare me but i won't be intimidated either. yeah yeah she she's trying to show that she's tough enough to handle it and that she's willing to do whatever she has to do and he he doesn't know that she is but you know he's he's trying to basically present her with the worst of the worst and see what she does mm -hmm. and she says She's going to do it. And then he leaves. And she's just kind of like, okay. She, you know, she's like, I, who are you? And he just, you know, he never gives her any answers to her question. So now no. we flash on to a vertebird. That was cool. That was very cool. My son was like, oh my gosh, he goes, this isn't my favorite model of vertebrate, but it looks really good. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, the bubble front type. I don't know what that means. I mean, I guess, because it looks like a a big, the rounded front. Yeah. And it looks really good. You get to see the cockpit. You see where the pilot's feet go. Um, and he has like the big window underneath where he can see the ground. It's really neat. You see where the knight like kind of attaches himself in with his little little armrests and stuff. <laughs> and it's cool. We see them flying. And I love the shot of the vertebrate flying over water. And you get that really nice reflection of the vertebrate. It's so cool. And yeah, uh that was brilliant. It was it, yeah, it was beautiful, beautiful cinematography. So Max is trying to make conversation with Knight Titus. And it's which is awkward, not going well. <laughs> no, and Titus doesn't really answer him, he just rips off his crotch plate, or is it at Max? It's just clean this, which he does, and so. he doesn't enjoy it, but he does. And then he puts it back on, and then Titus walks up to the pilot and bang, bang, you know, tells him to, yeah. to land because I'm he's bored. bored, yeah, and he wants to shoot something. 
And Max says, but we're miles from where we're supposed to be. And Titus just gives him this look. Well, whatever look you can give when you're in power armor. But it's you get like, the impression he's questioning not questioning me. <laughs> basically. Yeah. Yeah. It gives him that like your your job is not to speak. <laughs> not your job is not to have opinions. So yeah, Titus is basically going to make a point. So the pilot drops him off and he flies away and uh, Max grabs his big giant bag and he struggles off after Titus and they take off into um, the wilds is what they called it, right? Yeah. Wilds. This is when I get that really ridiculously oversized bag. The bag is, <laughs> is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. I'm wondering <laughs> it's so why funny. it's so big, unless it is just a statement on the fact that every it Fallout player, yeah, for the most least, part, plays the we, game over encumbered, and that's yep. literally how we walk around. <laughs> it, <laughs> like, you, how it, else do you fit everything we don't look in such like a that? small space? Yeah. Well, and you know, and it's funny because in the game we have these little tiny backpacks, and we carry around probably on average of what six weapons or more. Yeah, and I'm least. not talking about sidearms. <laughs> I'm talking about like heavy and weapons, Gatling lasers, and uh, flamers, and yeah, like and, assault, you know, rifles and yep. assault rifles and flamers, big weapons. Plus, everything. Else. My character has an entire wardrobe that she carries yep. around <laughs> because you just never know what a girl wants to wear. I mean, you at least have your own body weight in there and probably then some. Oh, at least. I mean, well, more than that, because I think my carry weight right now is 300 and plus pounds in 76. Wow. Mine's <laughs> around 260. I think but it's I, 300. I mean, it depends on whether or not I've had some rad stag meat and everything else. Well, but... one of my one of my girls is unfortunately a vegetarian, so she's always struggling. I'm like, why? I make her vegetarian. See, I was thinking of the XP buffs, yeah. <laughs> not 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 the practicality of the fact that. So now I have to make regular trips to Vault Fifty One so I can get the uh, the beer. I can't think of the name of the beer right now that gives you the um, bonus. And oh, she carries right. a lot of. She has to use a lot of carry weight uh, <laughs> buffs. Which yeah, the fact that they introduced the carry weight boosters was really nice because they didn't used to be a thing. But also, if you carry a lot of those, those have weight, too. It's like you, you have things to boost your encumbrance level, but also are weighing you down. But if you use one, you can give one more. <laughs> All right. This is probably a good time for a break. Somebody just got home and now my dog is okay. going nuts. So let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome to Three Count Thoughts. Let me introduce the crew real quick. Hi, I'm Maverick Stone. I'm Romer. And I'm Jaxus. Join us as we talk all things wrestling. Each week, we'll take a topic from the wrestling world, knock it around a bit, and then go over the week in wrestling from a strictly fan perspective. We can be found on all major podcast catchers. We can also be found at Three Count Thoughts on both YouTube and Twitter. Or you can send us an email using threecountthoughts at gmail.com. Okay, are you ready? Ring the bell. Okay, and we're back. So our next scene, so jump right in. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a lot coming up. Like this is a packed episode, another packed mm -hmm. episode. All right, so we come into, we we now see Wilzig and Four walking in the woods. And he stops to rest, and he takes off his lab coat, and he just ditches it. And he opens up a can of cram, and you see him, like, open the can and sniff it. I don't see him eat it, so I don't blame him. Maybe it was for the dog. I don't know. Might have been, yeah. It could have been. But they're sitting near a cave, and Four runs off and investigates this cave. And you kind of get a foreboding feeling about yeah. this. And you see a it's... sign that says, caution, hazardous waste, and that's never a good thing. <laughs> I mean, never. Uh, especially in a Fallout game. And uh, 
you know, Wilzig is kind of putzing around doing some more exchanging with his backpack. He puts on another jacket, probably hoping to, I don't know, not look so conspicuous. And four comes trotting back, like, look at me. I'm a good dog with a hand in, his, yep. in her mouth. This is where that hand comes from. This and is where the hand comes from that we saw in the trailer. So she comes Wilson trotting back gets this with a oh human shit. hand. Yeah, look on his face. Severed at the wrist. Just look, dad, look what I got. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so Wilzig notices this and he starts looking around and starts seeing a bunch of skeletons kind of just scattered around yep. the area. And he's looking very nervous. So I'm assuming you don't see it, but you just assume that he's like, okay, break time's over and probably takes off. So the next scene that we see is Max and Titus come into this same area, presumably at a later yeah. time. And they find the evidence that Wilzik has been there. They see the discarded lab coat. They find the can of cram and you know, Max says, oh, hey, look, you know what I found? He's been here. Somehow he knows. Oh, it's lab coat. Obviously, it's the targets. <laughs> the, the, here yep. we are. You know, we have found evidence that he has been here. Uh, and then they hear a roar of this creature. And Titus decides it's going to be this great idea that they must go investigate this cave. Personally, I would just be out, <laughs> but no, Titus wants he to He did see say me. he wanted something to shoot, so. He did say that, although it was him who wanted something to shoot it, but when they get in the cave, what does he do? He has Maximus take a look. Yeah, you go. Ugh. You go first. Yeah, and Max this even is says, when his abuse starts I don't in, have like, armor. More than bird bird. Yeah. Yeah. And Max Which... even says, but I don't have armor. And he says, and then Titus says, you earn the suit through acts of bravery. This yeah, is which an is, act of bravery. Which is bullshit. But I mean, that is kind of like what Tony Stark was telling uh, Spider-Man in the first Spider-Man movie. You need to be more than just the suit. But that's such a cop out. Well, like, it kind of is. Just, we, because... He knew he just didn't want him to, he didn't want to go in himself. I mean, here you are, the dude with the the big bad armor. You've got all the protection, like way more than the kid does, even if you aren't protected. You know, even if you don't have the best protection, you got more. And instead of being like, get behind me because I'm the seven and a half foot tall dude in metal, you know, yep. you're like, I'll go behind you, little meat puppet. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, like it he was the bait. It was bad. Yeah. Like you're yeah. the bait. Yeah. So. You even see Max get frustrated because his flashlight dies. So he doesn't even have light. He just wanders in. And Titus is egging him on the entire time, you know, basically calling him names and telling him he's basically useless, whatever. He's just being really cruel to him. And, you know, are you seeing anything? You worthless, whatever. And Max yeah, finally he's calling him dipshit and everything yeah. else. It's like, come on, dude. It's like, really? So Max finally turns around and looks and he sees that, oh, well, the Agua is not in here. He was out there. And now the Agua is found you Titus him growling and, and, right yeah. behind him. So Titus starts fighting the Agua. Um, but when it turns out that the Agua is just a bit more than he can handle, he starts running like a little, <laughs> like a little boy. <laughs> In his power armor, this is where he gets the big scratch. Um, yep, right on the chest. The clawed section on the chest plate. He gets uh, that in this fight with the Elgwai. And he goes running, which is now a big meme. Yep. <laughs> this scene is a meme of him running. Fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Which is really it's funny. Like, it is pretty humorous. Total it's humor. It's poetic justice, really. It really but... is. It really, I mean, the whole thing is poetic justice, not going to lie. So he's being, he trips and falls, which once they trip and fall, like you can't get up That's very it. easily in power yeah. armor. You're just down. So he's being mauled by the bear. The bear's just kind of tossing him around, you know, play with your food, you know? Yep. And he's crying for help. Help me, help me, shoot him. Blah, blah. So Max shoots the Agui and the Agui dies. So he what saves his life. For? Totally yeah. saved his life. Which, by the way, the 10 mil was amazing. My son loved it. Yeah. He was like, oh, look at the 10 mil. It's amazing. It was great. I do like it. Um, 
I absolutely was just like, it looked so cool. A lot cool. of people were like, how, how, like, that was a lucky shot or something because it should have taken more. Right? Like, you should... <laughs> okay, you got to incorporate a little bit of realism. You should have shot Titus, right? But no, this, he was but... a good shot. He was a good yeah. shot. So then Titus starts having his little baby meltdown. Uh, he starts mm -hmm. throwing a fit, you know. Saying it was his fault. and I've got like, this 2,000 pound mutated beast blah 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 sitting on me this is your fault this is the cleric's fault sending me on stupid missions for toasters and da -da 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 -da. he's having a big old fit and when max gets the helmet off of him we see he's kind of a dweeby guy mm -hmm. you know yeah. he doesn't he doesn't give you that vibe that he's like a cool knight he's kind of a dweeb in a suit and he's still I mean, it's for somebody, Johnny, not Johnny Pemberton. Um, no, that's uh, that's the uh, the that's other the squire. Squire. Uh, squire, yeah, the other squire. I always, if I ever call a squire a scribe, it's because for some reason my brain wants to do that. <laughs> um, I can't think of his name, but he's just uh, Michael R Rappaport. Rappaport, yeah. yeah. The juxtaposition between what you think a knight should look like and then this guy is just i think that was on purpose <laughs> yeah and for somebody who wants help you know he's going about it the entire wrong way i mean he's trapped he can't get up because he's on the ground in power armor it's not easy to get up and he's got this bear on top of him he needs help but he's being a complete ass to his squire yes. and i'm sorry I wouldn't want to be nice to him either. And he's, you know, he's, give me a stim pack. He's bleeding. He obviously needs help. You know, give me a stim pack. Give me a stim pack. But he's not being nice about it. No, he's being an asshole. He's being <laughs> a like... complete jerk. And so, you know, Max goes and gets the stim pack. But then he's like listening to this abuse. And he's just like, huh, you know, Screw I don't you, know. Man. Maybe I won't give this to you. Yeah, he, he straight up tells he's like, yeah, you don't deserve that armor uh, mm -hmm. based on, like, the Brotherhood's values. Mm -hmm. Well, and... because, because you know, you flash back again to uh, when Maximus is a child getting out of that dairy cooler and seeing mm -hmm. uh, a, a Brotherhood knight in his armor. And he has that idealistic view of they're here to help, they're here to save he has a very high view of what a knight should be. Right. And this dude ain't it. No. And so he, he's a, and, and, you know, he's sitting here, you know, Titus is telling him, they're going to kill you for what you did. They're going to hang you up and your vultures are going to eat you and da, 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 da. And he's looking at him and he's like, you don't deserve the suit. Yeah. And, and Titus like, well, says, I oh, and you mission. do. And yeah. it's just... You know, the whole time, you know, and the guy just still thinks that his little squire is going to take all this abuse and still give him a stim pack instead of just watch him die. And that's right. what Max does. He just sits there and watches him die. And then he, well, you, you know he's going to take the suit, but this is where we end the scene because he says, you know, he says, no, you don't deserve the suit. And Titus says, well, they'll kill you for this. And Max says, not if I bring back the target. So he's already got it in his head. He knows, yeah, I'm going to get in trouble for this, but I have a way out. So he's already yeah. thinking. You know he's thinking. So now we go back to Lucy. And this is this is one of the more fallouty scenes that you could possibly get. Lucy runs, you know, she... She comes across a homestead, I guess, in the wasteland. And there's a man working on <laughs> a contraption. We find out it's a water purifier. And we're going to affectionately call him Diaper Man. <laughs> because it's basically <laughs> what he's wearing. Uh, and a shirt and a hat. And so <laughs> she walks up to him and she has her tranquilizer her yeah, surrender, she's got her weapon pointing at, at him, saying, "Hi, can you give me yeah, directions?" Yeah, completely cheerful, like overly cheerful demeanor. Right, while she's pointing her weapon, <laughs> which is weird, like, "Hi, can you give me directions while I hold this weapon at you?" Like, and he's like, "I'm not armed." And she's like, "Oh, 
oh yeah sorry okay yeah <laughs> like she just doesn't get it <laughs> Uh, so yeah. they're talking about the water filter, you know, cause he's like, I don't understand why this water filter won't work. I keep putting sand in it. I'm just getting sand. She says, well, have you tried water? <laughs> and he looks at her like, oh. you got any? <laughs> and she says, well, I have a canteen if you want to sip. And he, you know, he drinks all of her water it, Yeah. and he tells her, well, when somebody offers you water, you know, if, if you find any water, you just drink all of it, whether you're thirsty or not. You know, yeah, in the you wasteland, you just anymore. you just do it because you don't know. So these are things that she's learning. You know, because she didn't know. You know, she thought the polite thing would be to offer a sip. She didn't know that in the wasteland, if you're offered water, you take all of it. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. She just didn't know. So, uh, yeah, that's he, another good. Um example of just the things that the wasteland can do to you psychologically just the toll it took on him yeah. and while he's walking around pantsless and yeah. <laughs> putting right. sand in a water and of course, you know, right well and the fact that it didn't occur to him that she offered him a sip and it didn't occur to him at all to like drink all of her water it did not bother him one bit and you know yeah. and she's trying she's like well i might need i I, I might want some and he's like doesn't matter you yeah. offered i'm taking mm -hmm. you know so he asked her if she's going to philly and she's like oh what's philly and he says the town right over the hill because i've never been myself and she's like oh you've never been and it's just there and he says no it's yeah. dangerous and he starts to tell her all the family members he's had that have died there <laughs> that have gotten themselves killed there and it sounds like they probably got themselves killed there for legitimate reasons, but right. But still, he says, "Oh, it's because the town is dangerous, not because I don't know. Maybe they got themselves killed for legitimate reasons. I don't know." <laughs> so he says, "Well, you could just stay here with me, um, you know." And he says, "You know, I need a family to work the farm." And she's like, "Oh." Yeah, no, I'm I'm good. I'm good. He says, <laughs> I'm but I'm gonna die soon. I'm gonna die <laughs> this could soon. All be yours. This could what? all be what? This could all be yours. <laughs> She's just like, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> that was hilarious. I'm not gonna live long. No, I'm thanks. I'm good. So she gets out of there as soon as possible. But that was just mm -hmm. such a funny scene. And granted, this was not. It didn't look like it was really much to. <laughs> but I guess it did set up how she knew where Philly was. Yeah, that's how, how she to figured get there. That. So yeah, that's how because you know, remember Chet tells her you have no idea where you're going yep. when she leaves the vault. You don't know what direction to go, and she did. She just set out kind of mindlessly, and uh, just whatever direction. And this is how she found Philly was this guy literally pointed her in the right spot. So now we go back to Max and yes, he takes the suit and we see scenes of him uh, trying it out and he thinks he's really hot stuff. So he's figuring yep. out what the power armor does. He's out there yeah, doo -doo -doo, throwing things, finds out he can literally <laughs> throw him like a football field link or farther, whatever. He's having a good old time and and they're playing It's a Man by Betty Hutton, yep. which is perfect. I didn't know that. So the armor looks great. We've already commented on that, but just the way that he's moving, it looks like it's it's pretty easy to move around in. Um, you see him kind of hesitate. He looks at Which, it. The interior looks like it does in the game. And yeah, the way he and climbs the, into it is exactly the way we climb into it in the game. Like you got the handholds yeah, and you have to pull yourself up yeah. and put your feet onto the little foot um, pads or whatever. And then it closes up behind you. It looks so cool. And uh, but he's out there throwing rocks at walls and knocking buildings down and <laughs> crazy stuff. He like he doesn't realize exactly how much he can do. And he hears a couple people fighting. So he goes to investigate because he knows he's a tough guy now. So he's yeah. going to go investigate and he sees two people fighting and he decides to break it up. And yeah. he takes the, he... what he sees as the aggressor and pins him down. And lets the other guy go, essentially. Yeah. Who says... He, again, he's trying to be the, the knight in shining armor. He is. Literally. But he, he 
didn't assess but the he doesn't situation. know the situation yeah. right so yeah. the guy the guy who was being beat up on says thank you you are a knight and a, you are what is a gentleman and a yeah. scholar and he Something leaves like and he doesn't even ask the guy what's going on until after the guy's left and, and then then go ahead and he's like the guy was fucking my chick <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like and max is just like uh oh, oh. um <laughs> Well, All right. carry on. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see that that he enjoys the power that this suit gives him, but he just with great power comes great responsibility. Responsibility that he hasn't quite figured out yet. Yeah. But you mentioned the maneuverability. That's actually what he was asking Titus about in the vertebrate. Right. Like, he oh, was. T sixty. Did you add this to it? To, you know, Did just, you add the you know, uh, extra maneuverability? And, and I can't remember yeah. what it was now. And I had it in my head. Um, some sort of lining. The some kind of lining. Um, yeah. If he'd added that to help with maneuverability, and that was when Titus was just like, crotch plate. Here, clean this. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, he was having a good old time. Thought he was doing something good. Turned out he was on the wrong side of the situation, but. Pay attention to your chicken fucker. Oh, my husband had a joke about that. Um, oh, he called him uh, Colonel Cluck and Fuck. <laughs> he said I had to put that in there. And I did take a note on that, but I couldn't, I lost it. Oh, wait. No, no, I lost it. I don't know where it went. But then we see that Max finds out that the suit has jet power and then he's off. He's off to playing again. So he's good. He it, it does he doesn't let it worry him too much that he kind of was on the wrong side of that situation. He's just off playing with his new toy. So now we're in Philly with Lucy, and we notice that you know she's kind of taken in the sights, but people aren't as as open and friendly as she is. Are you muted? Yeah, I guess so. There you are. Um, <laughs> yeah, she she sees a bunch of people and greets them but they completely ignore her yeah so yeah everybody that she walks by she's like oh hi hey and they all just like they look at her and just keep going like they don't mm -hmm. even acknowledge her anything it's it's not like she's invisible it's just like she's there and they're just like what on earth and they just pass right by her we see her passing different vendors. Uh, they're trying to sell her some dog meat and iguana. And there's a goat, like, it, it, and it looked like it wasn't mutated. I was like, well, what's with the goat? Right. But, yeah. And same with the chickens. The chickens we weren't see... mutated either. I'm like, yeah, the chickens weren't mutated. Yeah, there's there's places where we see non mutated animals, and it's like, yeah, but they had a, a great looking Brahmin. The Brahmin was amazing. Yeah, she walked past yeah. a Brahmin. It had two heads. It was beautiful. It was like, oh, it looks so sweet. It had yeah. such a sweet face. It was so cute. Yeah. Uh, she, yeah, she takes in the town. It's very megatonish. She walks through an airplane fuselage to get to the center of town. Yeah. And it's yeah, it all done kind of circle like wise, like megaton. And, yeah. That that brought back a lot of megaton uh, feelings. It wasn't done exactly like it. It wasn't like they cut and paste, but it was very not. It was very cool, and it makes sense to use whatever you can find an airplane fuselage, all those yeah, kinds I mean, of things like, you think to build back up to a like town. Diamond City as well. Yeah, and they, yeah. I mean, any anything like that. It did. It like, just it was a lot. I will be right. I mean, Diamond back, City actually. had the advantage of being in a ballpark. Yeah, I I'll be right back. Okay. I'll just talk about all this. So she passes through. She walks right past the ghoul who's just casually sitting in a chair, hat over his face so nobody can recognize him. And he's fiddling with a vial in his hand. We see this in the trailer where he is just fiddling with a vial. And we don't know what the vial is, but she walks right past him. Doesn't take note of him, of course, because he's just part of the background. He is part of the scenery. Uh, there's people fighting in the streets. She almost runs into somebody. It's, you know, just a general kind of chaos that you see in a town. She notices a shop that has vault items in the window. So she decides to try this shop. And this is Ma June's shop. So she goes into the store. And we see a, we see a few Easter eggs in here. We see the Pip-Boy. We see bobbleheads. 
<clears throat> um, we see some different things. There's a sign outside that says that we trade for caps only, uh, which makes you think that there's something between these people and the NCR. They don't take any of the NCR money. So we don't know what that story is, but they only accept caps, uh, no NCR money. And she goes in and she talks to Ma June. She opens up with, um, I see that you have vault tech items and vault tech items are the property of vault dwellers. So therefore you must deal with criminals. And that's Another just a great way to start a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, excuse me. <laughs> right. I mean, that's just, that's just the perfect way to get to know somebody. Well, you must deal with criminals. And she's like, I'm yeah, not you... saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying, you know, and she's like, I'm just looking for one particular criminal. And of course, right. now she has Ma's attention and Ma pulls out her famous line from the trailer where she says, you're an actual vault dweller. <laughs> you're an actual vault dweller. I thought all you dipshits were dead. <laughs> just so good. Yeah. And, and then but, Lucy you know, gets a, kind of the wind knocked out of her sails a little bit. And and then we find out that she's looking, at, you know, and of course, Ma thinks she's great. She's, come, come here, come here. You got to see this. You got to see this. Until she finds out that Lucy's looking for Maldaver. And then yeah, everything and then she's just like, kinda okay, get out of here. Shuts down. And she says, you got to go. Nope, you got to mm -hmm. go. You don't know what you're talking about. You know what you're into. You need to go. And she tells her, she says, you need to give up. Because you're so nice and clean, and you're just, this is too good. much for you. And Lucy says, well, you need to care more about the vault Tech mission, because <laughs> they're going to save America. <laughs> and Ma says, and how are they going to do that? <laughs> how are they going to do that? The vaults were nothing more than a hole in the ground for the rich folk to hide in while the rest mm -hmm. of us were left to burn. And if that's not truer words, then... Right. I don't know what is because it's true. Even my husband was like, she's right. <laughs> and he doesn't know that much about fallout. And, but I mean, everybody knows, I mean, certain people were allowed to get in the vaults. Not everyone. I mean, even vault tech had plan A, plan B, plan C. I mean, and we know the, uh, oh gosh, now I'm going to forget the little, uh, the little, oh golly, the vault, not vault, but the crap. Why can't I remember now? You know, the things that you get into on the surface, where Brian was. Brian Wilson, what was that thing that he was hiding in? Brian Wilson. That's oh. The, the, now oh, listen to me oh. totally bungle this. Brian Wilson of the Beatles. No, the Beach Boys. My <laughs> ADD is strong today, you guys. Uh, <laughs> My ADD is the off the shelters. chain. <laughs> no, not the shelters. No, the little blue um, things that you see everywhere in the wasteland. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, the, 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 yeah, the, With the, the little pods. Music. Da, 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 da. No. Um, like the, the affordable way for the radiation protection. Yeah, I know what you're referring to. I, I just thought, I always thought them as, um, the, the pods. Um, yeah, but they're not Vault Tech, but they were something else. But anyway, it was like the yeah, poor the, man's. The, 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 uh, the radiation, rad prote you know, protection kind of reminded me of like you could put yeah. a quarter in it, you could climb in. It's just kind of a yeah. Like anyway, y'all are probably back there going, "It's called this, you idiot!" I know, right. I know, I'm feeling that Scream myself. At your phone list. So <laughs> anyway, so Vault Tech got all these plans, but only the sh only the the vaults were for like people who could afford it, rich people right. or people who had privilege, certain privilege, because we know from Fallout Four. Nate was eligible because he was in the military um, because he wasn't really by, you know, he was like, I don't know about this. I don't know if this is really necessary, but we know that he wouldn't have, we get the feeling he wouldn't have purchased it, but because he was in the military, he was eligible. He was on the list. So he was, uh, you know, that's how he got it. And then we know from the TV show that um, certain people could purchase it, but you had to be somebody to be in a good one. That's a spoiler. <laughs> you had to be like <laughs> management to be in a good vault, as she said. We don't know what good vault meant, but well, we as players do because we know what Vault Tech was up to. She was yeah. probably trying to avoid being None in a vault them doing good, experiments. But yeah, some mm -hmm. of them are less uh, intense than others. That's just, uh, I mean, my guess is she didn't want to end up in a vault that was doing any kind of experimentation especially since she was looking for a place for her daughter. You know, she didn't want right. to end up in like, I don't know, uh, a vault that was, you know, 
uh, intentionally allowing radiation to seep in through the door or the vault that only took 15 year olds and under, you know, something like that. But we One digress. man and a crate of puppets. There you go. But we digress again. So the whole scene between Lucy and Ma is hilarious. Um, but Ma's telling her, get out. You know, she she waves goodbye, tells her to leave. Mm-hmm. And Lucy semi-graciously tries to to make her departure. Well, thank you for your help, <laughs> even though she didn't get any. And she leaves. And then we see Wilson hitting town with four. And can I just Lucy- say, though, like, keep pausing during the scene and looking at the decorations I in know. her shop. There's so much there. There's so much stuff packed in her shop. There's so much stuff packed in town. And I know yeah. that Nate Perky Pile has posted a lot about things that he got really tickled about. Now he is a yeah. he's a former dev for um Bethesda. He now has his own um independent game that he's working on. But mm-hmm. he did a lot of work for like Fallout 4. I think he did some Fallout 3. Now I'm I'm going to backtrack and I'm going to say something wrong, but he did a lot of work on like 76. So he, I know he did work in Fallout 4 because he said that there was a sign that they had up in um, Diamond City that they had put in Philly. And so he had shown that. And there's a picture um, of his cats. Like the, his, cats his cats that yeah. he had done the pictures of had made it into the show, the picture of Todd Howard riding the horse a la Napoleon made it into the show. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that are, is from the games that have made it into the shows as Easter eggs, more than just seeing a pit boy sitting in Ma's shop. I would have That's loved, just the obvious like, thing. I mean, because we all, I'm sure everybody has a pit boy somewhere. I've got one there. I don't. I, I wish I did. One but... there. You know, I've got two. Um, <laughs> I only have two. Well, if you don't count my little stand for my xbox controller so <laughs> you know she has a couple in her shops i know there was at least two in her shop that i could see there was oh, like there were one. three or four of them yeah, yeah there was a bunch because i i remembered i i there was one that no, i saw and i was like oh yeah too. there's like, another i want to say one of them was from spirit halloween i could be wrong on that but i think i saw some oh i'm sure they grabbed up stuff from wherever halloween they can one. find it you know yeah because you know prop people i used to work props for my high school productions and we just we just grab whatever we could that looked good, you know. It's like Goodwill, yeah. people's houses, your garage didn't matter. We just grab whatever we could get that looked good. I'm sure prop people in real movies aren't that much different, especially when it comes to things that aren't super common. Got to make the money last. Yes, you got to make the money last, especially if you want it for really good stuff and you want to pay for really good people. So but now this is what I was referring to where I said they, they packed so many things in this episode, uh, just all the the Easter eggs and like mm-hmm. where I have to I had to keep reminding like, did I really just see that hanging on the wall? Well, uh, and every and time you watch it, like I've come. seen this particular episode three or four times. And every time yeah. I watch it, I see something new. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I didn't catch that before. You yeah. know, it's you're going to see something different every single time you watch it. And I'm sure this is not the last time. I watched it again last night to prepare, and I'll yep. watch it again, I know. <laughs> it mm-hmm. won't be the last time. So uh, she runs into, she's coming out as Wilzig is going in. They run into each other, and she's like, oh, you again. <laughs> yeah. And he tries to tell her again. Like, this place you know, is dangerous. You, you really should go home. go home. This is yeah. not. This is not for you. And then he shocks her. Like she is literally floored, and he tells her everything about her vault. Yeah, your, that your was like vault he, is a meritocracy. It's like he had a camera in there. Yes, like, you know, it's like how does he know all these things? You know, your vault is a meritocracy. You know, you guys do this, and this is what you stand for, and da 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 da. And she's trying to ask him questions. How do you know these things? Where did you? Yeah, like how he do you knew know about all this corn and everything else. Right, like, you guys grow corn and blah blah blah. You know, he knows everything. It's like he was there. And she's like, I don't know how you know these things. So Ma comes out and kind of interrupts them because she's like, I told you to leave. You need right. to be gone. And then she's like, are you Will's like, you need to come inside with me. Well, then they get interrupted once again because the ghoul. the ghoul has. been like there were the heads on the pikes that it's like apparently well, the, she didn't the, notice those. The but... mannequin heads. 
They were just mannequin yeah, heads. Yeah, they didn't they were mannequin heads, but it's it still but it was, it's like it was a little creepy, yeah. So yeah. the ghoul pops up and says, Uh, is there a doctor? Or are you a doctor or something like that? Because you look a lot yeah. like a doctor Somebody, yeah, that, that looking I'm looking for. for or something. And Ma says, You know that your type is not welcome here. So I guess apparently Philly does not abide ghouls. They don't like ghouls. Right. And probably because they don't know who's feral, but apparently they don't take chances. The, or maybe they just don't like him because he's bounty hunter. I don't know exactly the whole story, but you don't see any ghouls. Yeah, he, there. he's pretty well known. He uh, is. He's, so. He is the most famous bounty hunter, but you don't see any ghouls in the milieu. You don't see anybody in the background that's a ghoul. And he tells her that, uh, well, he's not too concerned about that. He he just announces that there was a bounty that came through to all, what was it, all six? Something, yeah. Was it, it like was a lot. agencies? All six agencies. Yeah, that's what so it was. Apparently, it, it doesn't seem like he works for anybody, but maybe they contact him. I don't know. But apparently there's a lot of people who have been notified that this man has escaped the enclave so he is a very very wanted man <laughs> so he says he can recognize a bidding war when he sees one and ma says i've been paid very well to to ensure his safe passage out of philly and so he's like well we'll just see about that so she draws on him ma draws on the ghoul and the ghoul shoots will's ex Foot off. Lab off. Yeah. It's Which like is right below the knee. Really gross. So he's on the ground with his foot shot off. And everybody goes into hiding and Ma's screaming, There's a thousand caps in it for anybody who can take him out. So everybody <laughs> but you don't get shooting. a thing if I'm the one who does it. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know. Yeah. And, and nobody gets anything. And so everybody is trying to get the ghoul. And of course, the ghoul just pops off everybody. It's an amazing Oh my shooting. God, yeah. And two people and, with one round at one point. It's like, yeah. and, and what again, part bloody does mess. the ghoul have? <laughs> <laughs> he's got to have bloody mess as a part. Oh, for sure. He has to. And he's using explosive rounds, I'm guessing. Although we, from his bandolier, it looks like he's got different types of rounds. We don't know what all they are because sometimes he'll like pick a certain one. Is, but he's definitely got some explosive rounds. So he takes care of his competition. There's a kind of funny uh, shot where he goes over. He just meanders over and he looks at, grabs some tomatoes and he's just snacking on some tomatoes. <laughs> he offers to some to a guy that says, oh, well, I'd offer you some, but I, I see you got a hole in your neck. <laughs> right. <laughs> All out humor through and through, I'm telling you. So then we see... Lucy run into the store. Shop. Yeah, because she hears everything going on. and She's looking around because she's taking this distraction moment because she wants to go through Ma's books. And she wants to find out what the heck. And she finds out that Maldaver is the one who paid Ma to get Wilzig out of yeah. Philly. So she now she knows the truth that Maldaver is the one who's paying, that she's the client. So... She now knows this, and she hears all this going on, and, and she's thinking, I've got to do something. And the girl looks at the wall at a sees junk jet. A junk jet that was 285 caps or something like that. She sees but she could have just assault grabbed rifle. It off the wall. And, and then again, I think this many is... other rifles yeah. and shotguns and whatever else off the wall. And what does she do? She looks at her her trusty syringer on her hip and says, yeah, this is good. I'll just take this. But again, I think this is her vault tech upbringing. Probably, I, like, yeah, oh, I think it is her morality. Is wrong. Her morality. So if I, I used any of these, this would be stealing. So yeah. But yeah, the the um, the the so the uh, junk jet. It's like that would have been the most efficient because you could have picked up rocks off the ground. You could have picked up anything and used it. To, like you can kill people with teddy bears and wads of right? people with money. It would have been the most efficient she could, she could have weapon she could have in there. <laughs> but she goes with the surrender. She goes with her surrender, which, to be fair, did her well in the vault with the raiders. That did just fine. But we know it's not going to, yeah, we'll, we'll, we're yeah. getting there. 
So she marches herself outside. Well, in the meantime, while she's making her decision, Ma gets shot in the knee. Yeah. Uh, and Which, four, I wasn't the, expecting that either. But. Right? For Ma to get shot. And then, and then four, you know, he, I guess four just decides, oh, my daddy's in pain. There's a lot going on. He, you know, four attacks the ghoul. Yeah. And he ends up stabbing her, which anytime a dog gets hurt, I'm going to cry. So I'm like, no. So we see, and W, W, uh, these are from my notes. Wilsig. <laughs> I got tired of typing Wilsig over and over. Uh, Wilsig, he seems to take this harder than losing his foot, I think. Because yeah, he was, when he was gets really stabbed, upset. It's like, yeah. oh. Which is how I would feel too, you know. I'm. I think all of us had that reaction, actually. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, especially since it's only the second episode, and we're like, no, dog me can't die, <laughs> and it's just, you know, we're just like, no, yeah. So we see her get stabbed, and and it, it's really sad. So Lucy comes outside, and she's like, okay, I feel like we need to take a beat here, <laughs> you know. She, you know <laughs> so she's trying to be diplomatic. She's trying to, you know, she's using her educated vault tech education and she's trying to talk him down. And she's like, again, you know, another failed speech check. Which another failed speech check. Her girl's charisma must be super low. <laughs> she, her speech is definitely really low for sure. Her charisma might be okay, but her speech is definitely yeah. way in the dumps. She's just, her speech checks are just not, they're not making it in this show. She's, you know, she's just like, okay, I think that, you know, we did, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you I got think off on that, the wrong foot. And yeah. <laughs> and I think that, you know, Which, uh, you know considering everyone how, here would like, agree Wilson's that you're right being there, the, the aggressor the here. Foot. And if you're going to take that out on me, because I'm just trying to point out the problem, then, you know, it's just like. And he's just looking at her like yeah, he's like cocking his head, like, are you what serious right ever? now? Ever, you know. And she gets another fucking vault bar from Ma. Yeah. <laughs> so Dude, he starts to take a step the, towards her. You know, the vault's just scene. like, whatever. So he walks towards her and so she shoots him with her syringer. And of course he just pops it out and looks at it. And we get the other famous line from the trailer. Well, now, this is a very, <laughs> a very small, small drop, drop. In a very, very, very big. large bucket of drugs, yeah. which tells us a little bit about him. Yep. He must do a lot of drugs <laughs> because this but did that, not affect him. At this point, we don't know what, but yeah, we bit. just assume it's like jet or something. We don't know. You know, so yeah. this little sedative doesn't affect him one bit. So mm -hmm. as he's starting to raise his gun like he's going to shoot her here comes max again to save the day yep and of course he's pretending to be titus right you know he mm. actually flies in i am max titus of the brotherhood of steel unhand her whatever um <laughs> now i hate this part i don't love the yeah, flying a la I tony either, stark i don't it did provide some nice uh, combat with the ghoul coming up. Um, with the he, he definitely I took just, advantage of that, yeah. But I wasn't I mean, a fan of it either because, again, you don't see that in any of the games. They we just don't do, do that in any of the games, Tony right? Stark we don't have the little landing. handy things like like Iron Man. We have jetpacks. Why couldn't he have a jetpack? Like we yeah, have? he had a, a, a like a flamer attached to his arm at one point. Didn't he? Like when he was still he getting like used little to hand, it. He has a little hand. Uh, Which like that was Iron straight Man. out of Iron Man. Yeah. Right. And I mean, like when he's he he's standing on top of the crate of the big uh, shipping crate. And instead of flying off of that, couldn't he just jump off of it like boom and hit the ground yeah. and have the ground that shake made like, more of like a, we that do in the more game? Intimidating, yeah. Right. It would have been way more intimidating because it would and have shown like how heavy it is and how it's strong. Fallout Four, it is. you can actually damage people with shockwave. Uh... Well, you got pain train. Yeah. <laughs> he could have just run over him, you know. And then, and you get to see the nice advance where he's walking towards him and the ghoul's shooting him, do, 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 and you know, and the bullets are just bouncing off. But I just, mm -hmm. I hated the whole 
flying, like yeah. the little butterfly flying in entry. I don't know. It was weird to me. That was that was my little gripe. Like one of the only gripes I've had. Yeah. I, that was the one thing that I didn't like. So Max tackles Lucy to keep her safe and they fall into a building, but he's basically her shield. And the ghoul's shooting, but nothing's happening because, of course, you know, the armor is deflecting everything. And he lifts his shield and she sees his face. And, of course, we see the little, she basically has little hearts in her eyes because, you know, she's just like, oh, hi. <laughs> and she's instantly in love, we see. And Max tells her that Wilzig is very important and that she needs to take care of him while he deals with the ghoul. And, it, you know, he's confident that he is going to take care of this, this ghoul, that everything's going to be like done and over with in no time and that you know he'll be right back with her and they will take care of this wilzig problem together so she's like okay yeah. no problem and then he goes to to deal with the ghoul well the ghoul's just having a ball with this guy he's like leading him around making him chase him he gets thrown into the stairs and he breaks the stairs and he scrambles up to the top and and the ghoul taunts max and says well i would invite you to come up but you can't come up broken stairs with what is it a twelve piece set of a, a twelve piece skillet set on your back? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> like he apparently the ghoul is very intimately knowledgeable of power armor because he knew right where to cut. Yeah, we find that out that yeah. he knows, which we will bring that up later when we find out some mm -hmm. other things about the power armor about this yeah. whole fight. And I think it's just because he's having fun with this. Yeah, he he's, um, he he just assumes that he's going to come in here, and everything like he's just going to handle everything single handedly. Well, and I don't I don't think that his intention at this point is to kill Maximus. No, which is why I think that he doesn't use his knowledge. So, yeah. uh, Max is messing around. He really doesn't know what he's doing, and I think the ghoul realizes this because he actually says later, um, rule number one read the instruction manual. Yep. So I think he realizes like early on that this guy has no clue what power he, armor does, new. how it yeah. works, or that, you know, that he thinks that he knows this kid's just messing around and doesn't know what he's doing. And that becomes obvious because Max gets his foot stuck in um, a boardwalk and he doesn't know how to get it out. And the ghoul kind of just basically comes up to him and cuts his hydraulic uh, line which causes Max to yep. lose control. And then he just starts flying all around. And the ghoul ends up, what, lassoing him? Yeah, yeah, he... he... And then sends him <laughs> flying into the woods, which is kind of a funny thing. And that's why I don't think, I don't think the ghoul was trying to kill him, because I think he knew the kid had no idea what he was doing. If he wanted to, he would have. He could have. We know that later, yeah. that he could have, yeah. easily. But I think he was really just kind of like, Oh, this will be fun. <laughs> you know, let's show this guy who thinks he's all that, that he's nothing. And I think that's what he was doing. So then we go back inside and Lucy comes in to see what's going on. And Ma is trying to fix. Um, she's trying to fix Wilzig's foot. Yeah, she had like a robotic foot that she was attaching to him. Okay, but what um, about that meat grinder thing that she used to get it on there? Oh my god, yeah. Is that not that, gross? Oh, so she like holds he, up this thing that looks like a meat grinder good. to like rah, 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 attach to his leg and oh my god, that guy should have passed out. That looked painful. Well, and the thing is, she said that this was only a temporary solution. Um, so ah, It looked she's, painful. She's, yeah, well, and it sounded painful too from he because he was screaming. And did they the whole even time. give him a stim pack? I don't think so. I didn't see um, one. Like that dude like, could have used one. Yeah, and or I mean, we'll get into this in the the episode was it episode four where Lucy has has a ting a, a tinger uh, a finger reattached. Yeah, her finger. Yeah. But, so you know you, that sort of thing does kind of ex exist, and maybe a stim pack would have helped him regrow his leg because it seems well, to help with so, so many much, other but things. But like it um, probably would have prevented this the excess bleeding. 
yeah that he had but so she she meat grinds this attachment to his leg onto his leg yeah and then she screws on this metal foot that looks like a little ski <laughs> that's what it looks like <laughs> Because he's convinced that I can still make the trip. And she's like, oh, my gosh, I don't know how. And he says, well, she can take me. And he's talking about Lucy. And Lucy's like, oh, I don't I don't know about that. I, I don't think I can do that. You know, you, I got my own thing <laughs> going on. Comes in, she's like, was that a brotherhood night? Oh yeah, that's a, yeah, and everybody else is like, I this is what yours. you want to talk about right now. <laughs> she's like, was that a night? And they're all like, we got better things to do than talk about your love life. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty inappropriate for the for the moment. And she's just like, oh, was that a night? That was so cute. <laughs> yeah, so Lucy. So Ma convinces her, you can take him and you're going to have to because, you know, he says he trusts her. There's no one else that they can trust. And yeah. so Ma tells her, my client is Maldaver. And if you want to get to Maldaver to get your dad, you can take him because that's who she wants. And that'll get you in to see her dad. Because otherwise, you're not going to get in. You're not going to be able to get in there to talk to him unless you have leverage. And this is your leverage. So Lucy agrees because the only thing she wants is her dad. Because what a, she even said, she goes, what does Maldaver want with him? She kidnaps dads. Yeah. <laughs> Which was funny. She kidnaps dads. It was like, yeah, that's what she does for a living. She just yeah. kidnaps dads. <laughs> she, yeah, it just goes. Oh, to you don't have kids. I don't want to kidnap fresh you. Out of the vault. Yeah, it was but... really funny. I thought it was a funny line. Like she just, you're a dad. <laughs> I'll kidnap you. It was kind of funny. This is like, well, this guy wants, you know, she wants him, and he doesn't have kids. He has a dog, so I guess he counts. He's a dog dad. So I love the part where Ma's like, well, here, let me mark it on your map. <laughs> like she's Preston. <laughs> Preston Garvey. Here's a settlement that needs your help. Here's a settlement that needs your help or you need to find. So that's pretty good. I did like that. So if she, you know, you see her mark it on the pit boy, just like we have, you know, stuff marked yeah. on our pit boys in the game. It's pretty good. So you see them leaving town and we see, uh, we see Colonel Cluck and Fuck out there uh, trying to sell them. Sell them, <laughs> sell serums. Trying to yeah. sell them yeah. serums. Yeah. I can sell serums uh, to heal you. I can regrow yeah. your foot. <laughs> you know, <laughs> always the opportunist. And he's he's out there trying to sell them things. And then you see Max fly away across the sky. And Lucy gets a little smile on her face. Still screaming, too. Yeah. It's like. But Lucy gets a little smile on her face, like, oh, there goes my boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> it's too funny. And then we go back, and the ghoul, now that everything is done with everything he's doing, he goes into the shop, and he sees evidence of all the blood, and that Wilson is gone, that they've managed to patch him up and everything. And he finds four, the dog that he stabbed and he brings her in and puts her on a table and he gives her a stim pack because she's still alive. Yeah. And which... we see her hop right up because the stim pack has done its job and she leaves with him. And so which that shows a lot that of people uh, like, Oh, the ghoul does have a heart. Yeah. And you know, to an extent. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, okay, he knows that this dog belongs to Wilson. So of course the dog is going to go, Gonna go she's find going his master. To, he's going to so, try and, yeah, and use the dog lead to lead him, him to, to yeah. Wilsick to track Wilsick. Yeah, so of course, I mean, he he probably has a little bit of heart, a little bit of a, a little soft bit. spot for dogs, but he also is smart enough to to yes know that this dog can track me to its owner. So we we think you know we're we're like oh he has a heart spot or a soft spot in his heart for for this dog but you know at this point it is probably more practical you know he's smart enough to, to think that i need this dog so yeah it's probably not so much of the soft spot but we want to we want to think that he does still have some humanity left in him yeah he probably does and we see later that we, he, yeah we find out he's a dog person yeah. we do find that out later but there's just some things that it may not as it may not have been as altruistic as it looked, maybe. Right. So now we go back and we see Lucy and Wilzig traipsing across the desert, and he's actually doing 
pretty good. He's not trailing behind her too far, considering he's probably in a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. Probably could have used something. But they decide to stop and rest by a Russian satellite that has fallen out of the sky. And Wilzig says, well, this will have to do. And Lucy says, well, we still have another 20 miles to go. Like, she's trying to, like, you can do it, you know, with her little Lucy, <laughs> yeah. her positive attitude. And he says, nope. Uh, and, and she's like, how are you doing? And you you see that he's just bleeding all over his new foot. And he says, I'm not going to make it. And she's still like, no, no, you can. We can do this. We can. We'll make it. And he says, nope. I have already taken a cyanide capsule. And yep. he explains about the vault Plan D. It's mm -hmm. quick, it's painless, and it tastes like banana. I'm surprised it wasn't more popular. And so... He's, he said it was one of the more altruistic things that vault did. Yep. Or something yeah, that, that it was one of the better choices that, that vault made. Um, and that he was surprised that it, it wasn't a more popular option. But then it probably may have been popular if people really knew what they were going to be looking at. Yeah. Um, if people really knew what they were going to be getting into, then possibly it would have been more popular. But considering people, A, didn't really believe it, B, didn't want to accept it, C, just had no way of imagining something so horrible that could it actually, actually happen. exist. Yeah, it's you like, know? prepare for the worst, but, you know, who's to say it? But it who's to really... Yeah. I mean, nobody was, I think people in general, even pessimistic people aren't that pessimistic that they still don't have a little bit of optimism. Like it's really not going to be that bad or they just can't think in terms that bad. Yeah. So yeah, people aren't going to think like, yeah, first thing I want to do is off myself. You know, they're like, oh, I'll make it somehow. You know, I think, I think human beings tend to, to feel like they can be resilient. It's just, we're programmed to survive, right. I think. Mm -hmm. So that's probably why it wasn't that popular. But we do know that some people took that route because she runs, you know, she runs across that she house. She found family. Like that, yeah, yeah, where that family with, you know, at least the woman and her children. I don't remember if there was a man there, a male skeleton. I just remember the woman with the pearls, the pearl earrings, the baby in the high chair, and then a smaller skeleton at the yeah. table. They had all opted for the plan D. I'm assuming plan D is death. There may not Probably, have been a B or C. Yeah. I don't know. It might just be unless there were three plan other D. plans that they had. I mean, aside from the vaults, I don't know. The vaults are right. probably A. I don't know. I'm, I but, mean, we don't really know if there was a B or C. No. They might just call it D for death. I don't know. Could so be. he's already taken this, and he tells her that she needs to go ahead and take him to um whatever name. <laughs> and she says, "Well, I can't." How am I going to take your body when you're dead? And he's like, no, just my head. That's the important part. Just my head. And he, I think he, I don't know if he indicates his ear or whatever. I think she found that incidentally later, but um, he says, just my head. That's the important part. Just take my head. And and he pulls out a ripper and, and says, here. <laughs> and she's like, mm. oh, oh, you want me to, oh. <laughs> yeah, and that, that was a ripper. Yeah, that um, was, yeah. yeah. He gives her a ripper which we know from game, but she's kind of, ooh. And uh, she, he starts talking to her some more. Um, you know, he convinces her. He says the reason he knows she can do it is because she's a vault dweller, but she needs to start acting like a surface dweller if she's going to survive. Mm -hmm. And he calls her Miss McLean. Yeah, he, and she's like, how do you know my name? Tell and it's me. right and then, before he, he dies, and she's yeah. like, how do you know my name? How do you know my name? But of course, yep. he probably didn't want to reveal everything to her. And he timed it perfectly where she's never going to know how he knew all these yeah. things. We will probably never know how he knew all these things unless we find out that Enclave and vault Tech were hand in hand. You know, if we find that out at some point in time, that might be a season two or three thing. I mean, you do kind of know that from the games. Um but again, anybody who isn't a fan wouldn't know. Like normal people, yeah. Because we have to yeah. kind of look at this as like people. Because I know I have a friend who is, you know, he texted me the other day. He's like, I'm deep diving, reading about the Lord. It's your fault. <laughs> you know, because he watched the TV show. Yeah. And he knows I'm we into Fallout, but he's never played the games. 
We've all kind and, of had the, you know, the, these things happen. Like I've had friends call and text me like, hey, I'm watching the show now. I, I get what why you're right. You know, why you like this so much. Yeah, because he, he's like, he goes, this stuff is so messed up. I love it. And I'm like, I knew you <laughs> yep, would. This exactly. is what I've been telling you, you know. But it's like, you know, he's into other games and it's, you know, sometimes you just don't have time to get into everything you want to get into until, yeah. until something gets you into it, you know. I mean, but you play Fallout 3 and there's that uh, elementary school right there outside Vault 101 and there's a, a prison cell full of mm -hmm. you know, chill, child skeletons. It's like, you know, this, there is a lot of messed it up gives stuff. There's a whole new uh, definition to detention. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but at the same time, you've got these you know very happy songs playing while it's going on, so it's okay. Right, because it's just reading time. <laughs> just it's just a, a new way to keep order in the classroom but you know so he freaks her out because how does he know her name but he dies so she you know she gets yeah. up she looks around she's totally freaking out but you can see she's getting her resolve back she's gathering herself together and she turns around and she gets the ripper out and she's like okie dokie and you hear, I don't want to set the world on fire. Yeah. And we, we go into the closing sequence. And you see a Slocum's Joe on the horizon. Yeah. Yeah. When she was looking around, there's a Slocum's Joe out there. But, you know, it's just yeah. like we can already see that her okie dokies are changing. Like I said before, it's like her I am group. <sighs> okie dokie. She, yeah. She's already, her okie dokies are already like okie dokie. And they're already like mm -hmm. changing the. Okie dokie, you know, so she's, yeah. she's already changing, you know, she's got this resolve. So now she's, you know, she's going to do it. She's going to cut this guy's head off. And so this is where episode two leaves off is Lucy's going to take the head to Maldaver now. And so we have that to look forward to. So... Tell us what you think of episode two or any kind of things oh, that we might God. have missed or any uh, thoughts that you but, have. I mean, I'm sure we did, because like I said, there's, there's so, so many things packed into that there's episode, so much. like so many Easter eggs it's and like, foreshadowing. And, like I yeah. said, I've watched it three times and I was still picking up things last night that I was adding mm -hmm. to my notes. And of course, then but I had my husband giving me adds to the fun things brilliance to of, of uh, how well done this is. It's and, so yeah, a lot of things we don't really find out until later on in the show, but they do right. such a good job at giving you clues. They do. That... And they, and of course, but the thing is that you love about that is that you have like your own little questions that do get answered later, but you're just like, oh my gosh, what about this? What about this? And right. some things get answered. Some don't. We're hoping that some get episode in or some get answered in the second season. Some things mm -hmm. we know from games, but then we think like, well, what about, so that's why I've enjoyed watching it with but, my husband yeah. because he's not, he doesn't play Fallout. And I don't so think it's, it's been until um, episode seven or eight hear, that you find out about the cult, what's in his head. But, but did you hear that we might not get season two until 2026? Was it 2026? I thought that's it, what yeah, somebody it, said. It, they said at the very with earliest, the it'd be like the end and stuff, of 2025. We might not see it till 20. I'm hoping for 20. Um, but I also heard 20. that they did film a little bit, you know, while they were filming season one. You would so. think, right? I don't know. I hope that it's no later than next year. Yeah. And they also said, because I was watching, I forget who it was, somebody on YouTube was talking about season two. <laughs> They said 26. I'm like, I, you better be wrong. Um, but they were also saying that Amazon may do it the way they did the boys, where they put, they binged the first season. And then second season, they put like a couple episodes out and then they went weekly. I hope so. Which I, 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 could, I can see that because like people were saying, they were like, I bet they put all the episodes out because they weren't sure if it was going to do very well. So they just put and everything out did. at once. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, I mean, the ratings from like Rotten Tomatoes and IGN, everybody's rated yeah. it so high. I'm not even talking about just the fans or the, you know, Tim Kane or any of these people that matter as far as I'm concerned. I don't right. care what Rotten Tomatoes says. You don't count because <laughs> <laughs> even though, even though Jonathan Nolan said he's not doing it 
for the fans because you can't please everybody. He was doing it for himself, who is a fan. But it's, yeah, it's so it's amazing. well done. It's amazing. Now, yeah, I didn't love the flying power armor, but that is That's the nitpicking, only though, thing really, yeah. that I have found wrong in this whole show. And I can overlook that with yeah, everything exactly. else that I love. I mean, the power armor looks amazing. Yeah, I don't love the fact that it flies around like Iron Man, but it looks awesome. Mm. And you don't, I mean, I, I, here, I'll let that go. I wish yeah, it was a little more. To be I want to see it like, I want to see it pound points. the ground like we do in the games. Yes. But, you know, if I don't, whatever. I'll go in game and do it. It's fine. <laughs> I don't even and, wear power you know, armor in the game. Why do I care? I don't even wear power armor in the game. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> like when we were doing the Fallout 4 survival run with the Fallout feed, like I, it just power armor was the farthest thing from my mind. So I'm like, oh my God, how am I, how am I going to go through the glowing sea? Mm -hmm. yeah i only wear it for circumstances in survival and like why aren't you using power armor you number one you'll die less number two right you need the radiation provides rad protection i'm like yeah oh shit that's right i got power armor at the beginning of the game that's that's the only time i use it is like certain circumstances like in 76 i only use it when i'm over encumbered and i need that extra 100 pounds carry weight (laughs) then i'll pull out my excavator armor although sometimes i'm so over encumbered even Esca- even my excavator yeah. power armor is not going to do it for me. I'm just like, yeah, yeah I'm like doing the watch. When we're doing a, a Scorch Beast Queen in a nuke zone with the Modus Files group, yeah. uh, <laughs> especially during Jingle or Spooky Scorched. Yeah. <laughs> I hate doing the, the Queen in the nuke zone. I like doing where you're on the edge. Yeah. Like well, I mean, the, we it's mainly for the the mobs like the the yeah. swarms of things um like if you use your chinese stealth armor that provides uh and i've got my wet rads up to 100 um That's what i should do so there there's that but at the same time like the chinese stealth armor doesn't provide as much physical protection as my uh secret service armor but you know anyway that's it. that's what I need to do is now that I've gotten higher levels, I need to revisit my my builds and my perk cards and stuff. I've yeah. not looked at those in a while. Which I never deal with that unless I'm doing something with the Gato group. Yeah, because you have to change everything around. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got, my, my card, card, yeah. I got my build for the Claw Brawls. I got my build now for the Rock'em Sock'em Power Armor fights. So. Which is the cool thing about being able to have multiple builds and you could just swap yeah. them and not worry about it. That works out well. Well, let's wrap this one up and we'll be back with episode three soon ish. Whenever we can find time to do this again. So thanks for hanging in there with us and we'll see you again. Take it easy. Bye everybody. This podcast is part of the robots radio rocket club, a program designed to help all podcasts reach their full potential. For information about joining the Robots Radio Rocket Club, check out robotsradio.net.